The UN says the world's largest humanitarian crisis in Yemen is getting even worse with the pandemic roaring back in recent weeks. UN humanitarian chief Mark Lowcock says cases are surging in the country, which already faces a large scale famine. He said health facilities and hospitals have to turn people away because they lack resources. Lowcock was addressing a UN Security Council session. He said tens of thousands of Yemenis are already starving to death, with another 5 million just a step behind. Lowcock called for urgent action to stop the unfolding catastrophe. Yemen has been devastated by war waged by its northern neighbor, Saudi Arabia, for over six years now. Joining us now is uh, Yusuf Maori, Yemeni journalist and political analyst from Detroit, and Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies, joining us from Sydney. Hello, uh, Tim. I want to start with you. Hope you're safe and doing well. Uh, your initial thoughts on what's still continued taking place on a daily basis in the country of Yemen? The humanitarian crisis in Yemen, as the UN humanitarian boss just said, is worsened now with the surge of COVID cases. Of course, it's also the fact that they're just being detected recently because Yemen hasn't had a great testing capacity to find out about those cases. And so the epidemic spread quietly without people knowing about it. But this is just one other factor adding to the economic siege on Yemen, which is the, the root cause of the humanitarian crisis. It is the US and Saudi-led war that is the root cause of the starvation of the other infectious diseases and also the, co the the inability of the country to deal with a COVID outbreak that's at the root of this humanitarian crisis. So the siege on, on Yemen is really uh, the root of all of these problems. Right. Thank you, Tim. And I'd like to welcome Yusuf Maori to the program as well. Hello, Yusuf. Hope you're uh, doing so, uh, well out there and uh, safe and sound out in uh, Detroit, Michigan. Now, now, Yusuf, Mark Lowcock, time and again, we've heard him address this. Right now, it's before the UN Security Council. The big question, is anyone listening? Well, um, they're listening, and they can hear the cries of the Yemeni people who protest every single week, condemning the Saudi airstrikes and condemning the train on blockade. But I think the, the Yemeni people have grown distrust in, in the UN, in the US, because of their foreign policy in Yemen siding with Saudi Arabia and sanctioning this war by the coalition forces. So I think the Yemeni people have reached a point where they realize that the only way this war can stop is if the Yemeni fighters deliver devastating blows to the Saudi economy. And make no mistake about it, the Yemeni fighters have entered into Saudi territory in the, in the, in the uh, Najran and Jaizan province. And uh, they have been taken over Saudi military sites in these southern Saudi regions. Uh, they have also used these areas to conduct a number of attacks on Saudi military sites in the southern region. Uh, and so this is, uh, you know, this war is changing tune. It's now Saudi air force that are being targeted. It's now Saudi military sites that are being targeted and their Aramco facilities, something that Saudi Arabia was not expecting, and so this is why now they're in this perturbed state. However, with that said, they're still continuing to impose the blockade, and they're not showing any signs of letting up on the Saudi airstrike. So it's, it's, it's you know, it's uh, the Houthis' message, on Allah's message to the Saudi Kingdom is that their military sites will continue to be targeted, and their Iran oil facilities will continue to be targeted by Yemeni ballistic missiles and drones until the blockade is lifted, until Sana'a International Airport is opened. All right, and Mr. Tim Anderson, when are we going to finally see the Saudi backers, nations backing Saudi Arabia in this atrocity, finally change policy on their backing? I mean, we've seen, you know, some, some small signs of it, but nothing substantial enough to get Riyadh to stop. You know, Saudi, the Saudis, they never purported to be the beacon for human rights or democracy 
or um, ethics or, or any of the any of that stuff. But guess what? Who do, uh, Paris does, Washington does, you know, London does. I mean, they, they say that you know we're trying to spread democracy throughout the world, and we're trying to you know support the highest levels of high standards of human rights. Where are the democracy? Where's the human rights? Where's the humanitarianism? Where is the morality? And what's happening to the women and children of Yemen? Yes, there's a huge amount of cynicism about that, including uh, from the UN, and that's why, as your previous guest said, there's a there's a, a great distrust of the UN's role in this in Yemen because they've seen, of course, the US has a lot of influence on on UN agencies, and the US in turn passes on that to the Saudis. So the Saudis, for example, have been vetting um, what travels on flights, what limited flights there were available into Sanaa and so on. But look, the Saudis have been on the back foot for the last two or three years. <clears throat> They've been looking for some way out. But let's remember, it's the US behind the Saudis. Uh, the US behind the Saudis are at the root of this trying to crush independent regimes in the region. And what, Yemen is one of several regimes that the US is trying to crush in the region. So unless the US changes course, they are effectively using the Saudis as their front men. And that's the, that's the intransigent part of this whole crisis, that the US is behind the Saudis. And it's not simply a matter of uh, us talking about the Saudi role. Interesting point. Yusuf, your final thoughts. We have about a minute left. Yusuf Maori, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, the, uh, this, Go ahead. I think, I, I, think, I think the Saudis are growing concerned each day because, as I mentioned, the missiles by Ansar al movement has begun landing off Saudi soil. They never imagined that the kingdom would be targeted by Ansar al drone and ballistic missiles. Many, many Saudis today in Saudi Arabia are growing concerned with the Saudi crown prince for dragging Saudi Arabia into this unprecedented situation. There is legit concern from Saudis and the Saudi government that Ansar Allah could attempt to uh, retake Yemeni, uh, occupy Yemeni territory in the southern region of Saudi Arabia, in Saudi Arabia. And that's something that the Ansar Allah movement has also alluded to. So Saudi Arabia is investing in this war, not necessarily just to prevent on Saudi Allah from rising to power in Yemen, but also ultimately they feel the threat that on Saudi Allah will expand into Saudi Arabia. And, um, you know, according to some of their scholars, on Saudi Allah's main goal is to, you know, quote unquote, take over Mecca. And that's a concern that Saudi Arabia has. Um, of course, the, the, the main problem now in Yemen is ending the war, but it doesn't seem like the U.S. and Saudi Arabia are going to let up. In fact, President Biden, he recently mentioned that what's happening in Yemen is, is not a blockade, that it's only an arms embargo. So the U.S. administration itself is not even acknowledging that uh, humanitarian aid is being blocked, that fuel ships are being blocked. You can only, you know, we can only expect this U.S. support to continue for Saudi Arabia and to give them uh, immunity from prosecution for continuing their blockade and, and for continuing to get away with this uh, with this genocide. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining us. Yusuf Maori, there, a Yemeni journalist and political analyst, joining us from Detroit, Michigan, and Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies, joining us out of Sydney, Australia. Thank you both, and do stay safe and viewers. That's a wrap for this segment of your Press TV's News Review program. Thank you for tuning in, and goodbye for now.